Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle I'm hoping will take me rather less time than the movie length edition uh, we featured yesterday. Uh, that puzzle was by Fistimafel and this one is by Emre Kalotoglu and it's called Equal Sums. Um, a clue to the rules there, I think. Um, by the way, looking at the comments on yesterday's video, which was mammoth, there does seem to be an appetite for me to attempt Fistimafel's new logic puzzle, which is called Sisyphus. Um, and I'll do that for our patrons as soon as I can. I've read the rule set to that puzzle and they are very amusing and made me wish that I was rather better at doing graphics on the computer because I would love to be able to show a rock sort of flying into the side of the grid and jumping down um, and jumping down the sort of the, the, the buildings that it seems to have to do according to the rules of that puzzle. If you've not looked at it, I'll put a link under this video. Um, also on Patreon today, we're gonna release Demono's solution video. Uh, for his his puzzle, everything Rogan is on fire. So if you're a three three dollar patron, that should be available later on today. In fact, before this video goes live, uh, and that of course lays all the secrets of that puzzle out in front of you. Um, now that's all I've got to tell you. That's all the news. Let me read you the rules of Emre's puzzle. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat within a cage, and the digits in each cage must sum to the same total. So uh, all of these cages here, whatever we put into them, so if we put, I don't know, let's put some numbers in, 3, 4, 5 and 6 into there, we can see they would add to 18, in fact that's all automatically going to be wrong, let's change that, we'll change that to that, 2, 3, 4 and 5, that's 14, so that would say that each cage, we've got to put digits in it that would add to 14, um, but we're going to have to work out what the total is um, as part of the puzzle do have a go yourselves the way to play is to click the link under the video now i get to play let's get cracking and the first thing i can see here is that there are four cell cages now a four cell cage has a minimum value of 10 if we put one two three and four into it so we know that the sum of the cages is at least equal to 10. Uh, now if it was 10 what happens there look Ah, the secret helps us. Okay, let's look at box one and learn about the secret, which I only tell my very favorite people. Um, so if we looked at the finished solution to this Sudoku and assuming we got it right, obviously box one here would contain all of the digits from one to nine. If you add those digits up, what do you get? Well, you get 45. So if all of these yellow squares add to 45 and we decide that each cage is adding up to 10, those six cells would add up to 20, which would mean these three squares have to sum up to 25. And that is impossible because even with seven, eight, and nine in there, that only adds up to 24. So we know that, that each cage now is adding up to at least 11. Now, can we see anything else? Obviously it can't be greater than 17 because uh, if we put, we can't put more than eight and nine into an individual two cell cage. So we're looking for some digit between 11 and 17 inclusive. Um, column nine, look, we've got two cages. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, 11 is not going to work at all, is it? because that would imply those seven cells add to 22, which would mean these squares have to add up to 23. In fact, we've got to go to at least 14 for a cage, I think, because that would make those seven cells add to 28. And then we could put eight and nine into those two squares to get us up to 45, which we know the column will add up to. So now we're looking at at least 14 for the, so we're looking for 14, 15, 16, or 17. Now, anything else? That row's got quite a few complete cages in it. Let me just see if there's anything easier. I can't see much. Let's look at this. So if we go 14 in those... Oh, it's, it is 14. It is 14. Okay, look at row four. Now we know from column nine that the absolute minimum a cage can add up to is 14. Well, if we make those three cages add up to 15, for example, then these two cells would have to add up to zero because obviously 
3 lots of 15 is 45. We know the whole row is adding to 45. So 15 is not going to work. We've got, we've got to use 14. And we've actually got a little bit of a start here. I mean, I accept, I accept there is nothing in the grid at all. But I do know that the magic number today is 14. And that feels like a good, a good bit of progress. Um, so perhaps what we do is there's only two ways of making 14 in two cells and that's either 6, 8 or 5, 9. So that's going to give us a quadruple in this row and the rest of this therefore is adding up to 7. Oh yeah, this is a 1, 2 pair of course because 3 dots of 14 are, um, are 42. So these two squares have to sum to 3. Uh, yeah, and of course we we worked out before that if these are fourteen, this these two squares have to be an eight nine pair. So in fact, we can do better than this. This square now has to be the sort of counterparts to whatever this square is. If this is the very high digit of the fourteen domino, this is going to be the relatively lower digit. Um, now, what do we do now? Ah, that's interesting. Look. This this domino is interesting because this domino can't be the same version of 14 that this one is because it's pointing at it. So imagine uh, imagine that was 6, 8 and this was 5, 9. Now this one therefore could not be 5, 9 because then you couldn't put 5 or 9 in here. So this this one and this one are in fact the same colour and you know I need no excuse to colour in cells. Um, yeah, same is true of that one. That must there. This one looks at this one. This cell, therefore, cannot be a purple version of the 14. So that's a green version of the 14. That one must be a purple version of the 14 by the same logic. That means this one must be a green version of the 14. This definitely feels like it's what we're meant to do, doesn't it? So... Um, Now, can we just convert this into something helpful? We can. Ah, yeah, yes, I see. It's this square. So I've been focusing on 14. I should have been focusing on 8s and 9s, I think. Um, but it but it doesn't it doesn't change the logic too much. We know that this is purple this 8 9 is purple so we know that this one is going to appear in the green domino so we could make this square green now look at the effect of the greens on box 8 of the grid we know that there's an 8 or an, there's a green 8 or 9 in here and there's a green 8 or 9 here so then the green 8 or 9 is in this quadruple well how could it be 9 then if it's a 9 in here these three squares would have to add up to 5 and that's impossible because 1 plus 2 plus 3 adds up to 6 so we actually now know um, that green is 8 and therefore we can just fill it in that's 8 there's definitely an 8 in here now if there's an 8 in here the other three digits do are 1 2 and 3 this square now is a 9 that means this square is a 5 this domino is a 6-8 pair, this domino is a 6-8 pair, this domino is a 6-8 pair, and we are cooking with gas. I said that yesterday after half an hour, or 20, no, I said it after 20 minutes of the puzzle, and there was still an hour and 10 minutes of the puzzle to get, or the video to go, so I hope that's not going to be the same today. Um, now, what do we do next? We've these squares now have got to be 3, 4, and 7, just to complete row 4. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> it was going so well. Oh, come on, Simon. What on earth do you do next? Hang on. Um... You can't put 9 in there, look, because that's the same problem I would have had with putting 9 in there. So 9 is on the left-hand side of box 1. 
It's therefore on the right hand side of box four. Yes, I know that's not doesn't seem terribly helpful. Um, can we? Oh dear! Come on, Simon. I feel like it must be relating to the nines. Maybe that's not right. Sixes, maybe. The six in this box is in in. Oh, okay. That's this is interesting. The six in this domino is pushing a six into the cage down here. Now that's interesting for two reasons. Firstly, we now know that this cage needs eight more. Whichever one of this is a six, the other two cells are going to have to add up to eight without using six. So this has either got three, five or one seven in it. Um, and in fact, the one and the three from those options cannot go in that domino. So I think there's a one or a three here. Because obviously this is a one, two, three, eight quadruple. But the other thought I had was that if there's a six in this domino, there's not a nine. So the nine must go in one of those cells. And that, oh no, okay. Well, that means there's a nine in one of these squares. which means there's a nine in this domino, because however we arrange these nines in the finished solution, imagine this was a nine. Well, then you can see this is gonna be a nine. Now, the only other state of affairs that could exist in the finished solution, just thinking about this box for a moment, if this is not the nine, the nine would be here, and this would be a nine. Either way, there's definitely a nine in one of those two squares. So this cage is a nine and then two cells that sum up to five. So that square's got to be one, two, three, or four. The five in box five, because there's a five here, look, is not is not in this cage, or you have to make, it would have to be a zero, five, nine cage. That won't work. The five is in there. Oh, that's lovely, actually. Look at this. So now, just using the sort of geometry of the cage and the fact that the five cannot join a nine in this cage, then the, the five in, in box five has, is forced into this cage. Now, once the five is forced into this cage, it cannot have a nine with it because it's a three cell cage. So the nine must go there in box five, which means there's a nine pair there. That's very clever. Um, Although, that means this square is a 1, 2, 3, or 4 to be the counterpart to this one. Now, can we go, can we go further though? So this, this has got a 7 or an 8 with it, doesn't it? Because we know that the other two squares that are not 5 uh, in this triple here have to add up to nine and one of the squares is a one or a two so it needs an eight or a seven I feel like there's probably a way we can uh, it seems very close with sevens and eights to locking something in there doesn't it but I can't see how to do it um, right Five, ah, five, maybe Sudoku on five in one of these two squares. Oh, no, it can do better. Yeah, it is Sudoku, but five is not there because this is a five, nine pair. So five goes here. So five is now in that quadruple here. And now it's the same same for both of these but these are quadruples adding up to 14 that contain a five so the three cells that are not five sum to nine now there are three ways of making nine in three cells one three five that's ruled out because it would repeat the five one two six 
or two, three, four. So there is always a two uh, in these cages because it's either going to have one, two, six with it or two, three, four. And that's rather, look, look what happens down here now. Now twos are locked into those three squares in box seven and these four squares in box eight. How many twos are there in this grid in those two rows? It's not a trick question. If we look at the correct finished solution, there will be one two in row seven. There will be one two in row eight. So there are two twos. So what we can't do is put any twos in those six squares. If we were to do that, there would be three twos altogether in rows seven and eight, and that would be Roggen. So the, the two in this box look has to go there. Um, that doesn't unfortunately resolve this this 14 cage for us. Um, so we've either got this is either one two six or it's two three four. Ooh, getting prodigious levels of pencil marks in there. Um, this one ah ah this one's better because it can't have six in it. So this one cannot be one, two, six, five. It must be, this one must be two, three, four, five, I think. And there's no five in those cells, obviously. These squares are now known. Oh, <laughs> I thought I made a mistake there. I was like one, seven and nine don't add up to 14, but they don't have to because they're not in a cage. So that's fine. Um, now, what does this mean? Let's get rid of the nine pencil mark in this corner there and have another stare. Two, three, four, five. We've almost got a quintuple going down there. Seven, nine. Seven must be on the right-hand side of box seven. Therefore, in those two squares in box four. And we do better than that don't think we know enough about the ones seven nine two three four five sixes and eights that's not a six that's still not quite giving us what we need in the column um, okay now I think we're missing something. What is it we're missing? How are we going to go make further progress in this puzzle? We could... Ah, I see how we do it. Eight. Where does eight go in box seven? It's got to go in one of those two squares. That means we get the eight and the six resolved up there. We get the eight and the six resolved there. Now, ah, now six, because there's a six in one of those two squares, six is pushed into this triple so this now we know is one two and six and we know where the one goes because of the one up here so now we effectively know seven cells in this column we're just looking for the three and the four which must be in those two cells and can we do anything with that nearly Nearly, but not quite. Um, hmm. Okay. It must be about to crack, surely. One has to be in one of those two squares. Um, 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 um. Okay, so maybe we can do something we do something with eights in this column? No. Can we do something with twos? I don't think we can. Yeah, I think it would be quite easy to miss some, some little piece of logic in this puzzle that would probably be very helpful. Um, so what do we need in here? This is either either going to be five with the six or it's going to be seven with the six so these are five six seven 
That's definitely not 5, because of the 5 in the column already. Which means 4, look, is never in any of those squares. So 4 must join the 9s on the left side, which means this square is not 4, which means this square is not 1, good grief. Which means that square is 1, this is now 2. Now these two, well, these three squares together we know add to 14. You can see we've got 2, and then there must be a 5, 7 pair. So that means those aren't 7, this is 7. We've now got a 3, 4 pair here, so this isn't, whoa, 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 no. That is not 3, so this is not 2. And this 2 means that's in fact a 1, and that must be a 4. Get rid of the 4s up here. Get the 3 and the 4 sorted out in those cells. So now we know what these 3 squares are. These are 3, 7 and 8. We can do a little bit of tidying up as well. Get rid of the 8, get rid of the 3 up here. This is a 2, 5 pair. Get rid of the 2 from there. So now this column is basically known. We've got to put a 2, 7 pair into those. And we've got a 5, 7 pair there. Beautiful. So 7 and 2 go in. Those two squares are 8 and something. 6. Bobbins. It doesn't tell us what the order of them is. 6 and 8. Gus does get rid of an 8 from there. And now we take stock. Okay, what have we learnt from this? Have we learnt the secrets of the universe? Or do we still have to discover them? Let's get rid of the 5s from there. Um, hmm. I think we still have, ah, six, eight there. No, that's good. That gets us a seven. That seven is really important because we knew there had to be a six in that domino. So we now know exactly what the composition of that cage is, which means we now know the composition of those three squares, which are four, five, and nine. Which we can, let's put that in. Let's see if that gives us anything. It does. It gives us the seven and the five up here. We need a three in the column. Let's put that in. This seven is fixing that this square is a three. We've got a five, nine pair in row nine. We've got, we've got all sorts going on now. I think we, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Not until I know I can finish this reasonably quickly. Um, one, ah, one beautiful. One cannot go in this Tetris shape here. Now, if you can't put 1 in a 4-cell region that adds to 14, it's got to be 2, 3, 4, and 5. And 5 here is rather clever. That puts the 5 in those squares. The 4 must go here because there's a 4 there. Oh, this is just completely sorted. Now there's a 2 up here. And how do we make 14? Well, how do we make 2 of these squares add to 12 without using 9 and 8? We actually know that that's got to be 5, 7, 2 now don't know the order of it but that means we now know those squares are one six and eight which we can put the eight in anyway ah eight one six those have got to be three and four which is probably resolved i just can't immediately see how those are six seven and nine again it sort of feels like that should be resolved but i can't see how um Maybe this one, is that doing anything? This five, is that doing something? I can't see how to resolve this. Uh, apologies if some of you are shouting at your screens. Um, that's a one, two or four look. But again, I don't think we know exactly what it is. I'm afraid. So we're still going to have to do some more thinking. Um, that square is interesting because that, look, look what that sees in the column. It's got the, the gaps in the column are 3, 6, 8 and 9. Well, that's 3, 6 and 8 there. That's a 9. Oh, that's huge. So that gives me a 9 and a 5. And a 9 here. This 
five. Oh, maybe it's not actually tidying everything up. But it was. It seemed like it might do. Um, come on, come on. Ah, th no, this nine is helping down here. Look. Yes, yes, it is. There's a six and a two we can now do. Now there's no two in those cells. Uh, has that done anything else? Actually, that is, there's a slight question mark. I might have made a mistake here. Because I'm just looking at, there must be a way of disambiguating the bottom of the grid. And I'm not immediately seeing what it is. Unless I've missed a pencil mark down here, this should now, or maybe it's this column that could still have an effect on this box, maybe. I need something to disambiguate down here. I think the only option now is this box being interfered with from above. Um, perhaps this square is the key. So how do we do that? We know eight is in one of those squares. Uh, in fact, look, if we look at those squares, that's a three eight pair. Ah, there you go. There you go. This square, if that was a three, what would we put in this square? Well, we'd either have to put two in here and with a nine and nine won't work, or we'd have to put four in here and put a seven, which won't work. So this square is an eight. That's a three. That's an eight. And that's a six. Now those two squares have to add up to six to make 14. So this can't be a four anymore. And, oh, and it can't be a one because that would put a five here. So this is now known. That's a two, that's a four. Now I hope this, yes, this two is gonna interfere with this box. Look, three and one, lovely. Three and four, that's now becomes a nine. That fixes the nine and the seven. And we are able to disambiguate the bottom of the grid, which is a relief. Um, that's a four. This is an eight and this is a two. Yeah, that all gets done. That fixes the four and the three. We need a one and a something there. One and a six. Yeah, we can do that. Six and one go in. One and seven go in. That becomes a two look. Um, those squares are one, four and seven. Snooker maximum. Um, which means we get the one and the seven, the seven and the five, two and the five, and the three and the four, and the eight and the six, and there you go. That's how to solve a very nice puzzle indeed. I enjoyed that. It didn't take me an hour and a half, which is great, uh, but it was still really, really elegant. I loved, I loved that the beginning was fairly clean to find that the, the total was 14. And then a little bit of colouring was magic in terms of what it did to this this two by two here. And from then on, it was just, yeah, a lot of very pleasant logic. So let me know in the comments how you got on. And thanks so much for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.